Let's say you got a turbo or supercharged combination. Makes 700, 800, 900 horsepower. How do you know if that's good power, bad power, or somewhere in between? Using the Holdener Power Boost formula, patent pending, you can apply this formula to any turbo or supercharged combination. You can find out if it's doing what it's supposed to, if it's doing less than it's supposed to, or if some random guy on the internet is just making this stuff up. Let's check it out. Okay, so what is this patent pending Holdener Power Boost formula? Well, it's easy to understand, and it goes like this. Your naturally aspirated motor is already working under pressure. 14.7 pounds of pressure, to be exact. Now, I know all the engineering guys are gonna yell at me about that, and it varies with temperature and pressure and all that, but stay with me. It's easier to understand like this. So, let's say your LM7 5.3 makes 300 horsepower, naturally aspirated, under 14.7 pounds of atmospheric pressure. If we double that pressure with a turbo or a supercharger, we can double the power output. The formula is as simple as that. So if we add 14.7 pounds of boost to an NA motor, we can double the power output. And we could do it at any percentage of that. So if we add 50% of an atmosphere, 7.35 pounds, you'll, you'll add 50% of power. So we would add 150 horsepower to our 300 horsepower motor. And it works regardless of the starting power. If you start with a 400 horsepower motor and add 14.7 pounds of boost, you'll make 400, 800 horsepower. If you, if you start with a 450 horsepower motor, you'll add 900 and it works that way. That's the way we apply this formula. Everybody with me so far? Now that we understand the formula, the great thing about this is this allows us to check and see if our combination is actually meeting the formula. Is it making less than the formula? And also is that guy on the internet yelling and screaming about how he made 900 horsepower with his 5.3 at only seven pounds? He's probably lying, but you can check that with this formula. You can apply it and see if these guys are you know, full of BS or if they're telling the truth. But more importantly, you can find out if your combination is actually working. Because if you put a motor on the dyno and you're running it and it's a 5.3 and it makes 300 horsepower NA and it only makes 400 horsepower at 10 pounds of boost, you know something's wrong. So it gives you an idea, a good way to check to see if your combination is doing what it's supposed to. Let's take a look at three examples. One where it's working, one where it's not, and then a supercharged version because it works differently on a supercharged combination. Let's take a look at all three of those. We'll talk about each one, then we'll talk about all of them at the end. Before we get to our examples, we need to take a look at the actual math, the actual formula itself that you use to calculate the power output of your turbo combination if you know the power output of your NA combination and you know the boost. Those should be pretty easy. So the formula is this. The power output of your turbocharged combination is equal to the power output of your NA combination times your boost pressure divided by 14.7 plus 1. So we'll do that again. The NA power output times boost pressure divided by 14.7 plus one. That will give you the power output of your turbo combination. Let's take a look at those examples. To illustrate the power boost formula, I chose three examples. Two of them run with turbos and the other one run with a supercharger. And the reason I chose the supercharged version is because the supercharger works a little bit differently than the turbos. There's parasitic loss associated with driving the turbos, but we'll get into that when we talk about that that supercharged version. For now, we'll start off with, this is a six liter. This was the first six liter I ran as the Big Bang motor. I ran the 4.8, and then the 6.0. All of those were Gen 3 motors, and this was the last Gen 3 motor that I did before we stepped up to the Gen 4 version. We take a look at the test description on this thing. This was a six liter LY6 short block. It had TEA stage two, Ported 317 heads on it, uh, Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 Turbo Cam, and a Holley High Ram. Stock bottom end with just ring gap on the 6 liter, and it produced 529 horsepower and 457 foot pounds of torque. Run NA, which we always do before we add boost. Then we added 14.6 pounds of boost, almost exactly one atmosphere, 0.99% if you're doing the calculations actually. And if you do the power boost formula, if you take the NA power output and multiply it by the boost divided by 14.7 plus one, you come out with almost exactly 1,050. So this particular example 
followed the formula perfectly, meaning it did exactly what it should, exactly what we expected it to do, exactly what we were hoping it to do. And this, this combination worked out real well. This thing ended up, as I said, ended up going up to make uh, 1,482 horsepower with that Gen 3 short block before we eventually broke a rod. Now I'm not sure, maybe there's more power there if we put more effort into individual cylinder tuning or got better cooling through that air to water intercooler. I mean, we only use the CX racing piece. There's probably more left, um, but hey, maybe that is the limit of the Gen 3 rod. I mean, 1,482 horsepower and it made about, I wanna say it made like 1,300 foot pounds or something. It was um, in the ridiculous area. So, you know, maybe that's all that they've got. But this combination worked with the power boost formula perfectly. So now let's take a look at an example where it didn't work out and we'll talk about why. The second example here was a 5.3 liter that did not follow the formula and for good reason. Uh, the biggest one is that we did not run an intercooler on this application. So it had two things going against it. Right off the bat it had no intercooler so it had a much hotter charge temperature than it would with an intercooler at the same boost level. And also because there was no intercooler, we were forced to run, I mean, it's always a good idea to run less timing. So both of those things combine to not allow this combination to produce the power output that we would expect based on our idealized formula. And to realize it doesn't always work out with that formula. And that's why I'm showing you examples where it doesn't work out. It just gives you an idea. It gives you a basis to take a look at something and go, hey, look, it should kind of be doing this, but yet it's doing this over here. So why is that? It gives you a direction you can take a look at, but on this particular combination, this was a 5.3. It was a stock LM7 from the junkyard that had ring gap in it. They all kind of make about the same power. They're gonna be in the somewhere near 350 horsepower and 375 foot pounds or so, somewhere in that range. And this one was no different. We run it the way that we always did with headers and a Mazir electric water pump, a Holly HP management system, and with no accessories or anything on it. So it made 353 horsepower and 379 foot-pounds of torque when we ran it NA. Then we added our single turbo kit. Real, real custom job with no intercooler. That was a small precision turbo, a 67 millimeter precision, precision turbo, capable of way more power than this, but equipped uh, with that single turbo kit and no intercooler, it produced 510 horsepower and 521 foot-pounds of torque. Again, with no intercooler. Now, and that was at eight pounds of boost. So if you do the math at eight pounds of boost, let's do our quick calculator here. So we take eight, divide it by 14.7, 54% plus one equals, and then we multiply that by our original power output of 353. This combination should be ideally making somewhere in the 545 horsepower range. But as you can see, we didn't get there. And the reason for that, as I said, was we had a lower charge temperature. Uh, I mean, it had a higher charge temperature because we did not have an intercooler. And also we were forced to run a couple of degrees less timing than we normally would with uh, if we were to have an intercooler. So this is what you're looking at. And, and again, it's a, it's a, the formula allows you to say, hey, look, we didn't do what the formula suggests. So now why is that? So let's take a look and figure out what are the things that are stopping us from getting this idealized formula. In this case, no intercooler and no timing. So now that we've taken a look at two turbo combinations, let's take a look at a supercharged version. Our final example for the power boost formula discussion is actually on a supercharged LS application. It's a 5.3 liter. This one came from the guys at Strictly Performance. I've done a bunch of testing with this combination. It worked out really well. It is a boost ready combination. 
meaning it had Gen 4 rods. It has hard anodized but still cast pistons. It has ring gap in it, uh, head studs and gaskets. The 706 heads that they used have stock valve sizes, although it has been given some uh, minor porting from the guys at K-Tech. They look really nice. I haven't flowed them, so I don't know what they flow. But it's basically a 5.3 with mildly ported heads. And on this application, we installed a factory LS9 cam because we were doing testing for a variety of different things. But on this combination, it was running an LS9 cam. So the NA combination, before we added boost from our, from our Vortex supercharger, was 428 horsepower and an even 400 foot-pounds of torque. So the combination did okay. Now let's find out ha what happens when we install our turbo system. I mean, not our turbo, our Vortex supercharger. Come on, get with the program. So here is our Vortex. This is a... Uh, an SI trim, I think. Yes, it's an SI, and we're running eight point a peak of 8.2 pounds of boost. And unlike the turbo, the boost from the centrifugal supercharger, the peak boost happens at peak RPM because we have a rising boost curve basically with a centrifugal. It just keeps adding boost as we go up. So it made a boost of a peak boost of 8.2 pounds, but the power output jumped to 642 horsepower and 561 foot-pounds. And if we do the math, 8.2 pounds should give us a 55.7% increase in power. That would bring it to 666 horsepower. But in this case, at 8.2 pounds, the combination produced 647 horsepower, which is only about a 50% gain in power at that 8.2 pounds. So, some of that loss, obviously, is driving that supercharger. Now, we did have a really good intercooler on it, so that was nice, but it takes power to drive the supercharger, just like it takes power. If you take a look at the accessory test I did, it's right here. If you take a look at that, uh, you, it takes power to drive the accessories. It also takes power to drive the supercharger. So you have to subtract that from the, the amount that the dyno would see because it's absorbing that, basically, using that to drive the blower. So this is another example, like the previous one without the intercooler, where this won't follow the power boost formula because of the supercharger. And this gets more and more dramatic with superchargers, especially, and especially roots type superchargers, where the drive loss associated with spinning that supercharger gets dramatic. It's not unusual for some of these to be two or even 300 horsepower loss from driving that supercharger when you're spinning it very fast and at very high boost. Both things, the roots blowers particularly, is not designed to do. Even though guys are doing it in drag racing, obviously they're always trying to do as much as they can. So that makes it really hard on that stuff. So that's a loss that you, you have with the superchargers that you don't really have with the turbos. You might have a little bit from the back pressure, but it's not gonna be nearly as much as it is from uh, a really big supercharger. So there you have it, the power boost formula. Let's jump to our, our conclusion. Okay guys, what do you think? Is the power boost formula gonna be useful for you guys? Are you gonna apply it? I want you to learn two things from this video. First of all, the power boost formula, the math is solid. It definitely works. If you have everything right, if you have intercooling, you have enough timing, you have enough octane, and the turbo is doing what it's supposed to, if you add 14.7 pounds of boost, it should double the power output. Now I know that the engineering guys are gonna scream at me about that and say that the boost doesn't matter, but the reality is it does. It absolutely works. The formula works, I've tested it hundreds and hundreds of times and it always works out. And if it doesn't work out, there's a reason. And that's really the reason I, I like the power boost formula so much is because it tells me that there's a problem. Then I can start looking for what that is. Was it temperature? Was it timing? Was it back pressure? I mean, why is it not doing what it's supposed to? But the formula tells us what it's supposed to do. The other thing is this formula, like, like any way that we look at any problem is not absolute. Nothing I tell you on this channel, in any of these videos, if I test a camshaft, if I test an intake manifold, cylinder head, turbo, even a formula like this, it's not absolute. There are other ways to look at this. Some guys look at it like horsepower per pound of boost. Sometimes guys want to go even more specific than that and more scientific. Let's, let's calculate the airflow. Let's do the density. Let's do all that stuff. But the reality is that that's not absolute. That's not the best way. This is not the best way. There's no best way. There's lots of good ways to look at it. 
I like this power boost formula because it's easy to apply, it's quick, and it tells me right off the bat, is there a big problem? Now, we can go into depth and look and see if there are little problems, you know, back pressure problems or exhaust flow, timing, whatever it is. We can start looking at those, but we have to realize that there's a big problem first, and the Power Boost formula does exactly that. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments, are you gonna use it? The reason I'm telling you this formula is because I'm going to apply it all the time. Every other video that I do on forced induction, I'm going, I'm going to apply the Power Boost formula just to kind of see where we are, just like we did in these examples. So get ready for it. It's going to be there all the time. I wanted you guys to know about it. I want you guys to apply it to your formulas, to your combinations. Let me know it works out. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Go tell everybody about the channel, man. Let's get everybody on board. Have them help out. I want to, I want to get all those comments. I want to know what you guys are doing too. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Baxter out. I found a four leaf clover.